Oh, you still think that Thomas Edison is the father of cinematography and film? Bessie, you are so far away from the truth. This is Historical Events That Don't Make Sense. My name is Rayanne, and I am here to explore everything weird, wacky, and just plain mysterious. And today, we are going to be exploring the life and disappearance of the true father of cinematography, Louis Le Prince. Welcome back to the podcast. It's been too long since I recorded. It's just been a couple of weeks of a hiatus, and that's totally fine. Um, a few things happened. Um, it doesn't matter. We don't care. Spring break, which meant that I was lazy, um, and midterms, which happened before that. And then I have a baby niece now, so I got to hang out with her. That was like this past entire weekend. That was my excuse for not recording. But we're here now, and we're partying now. Yay! Um, today's drink, Taco Bell Pepsi, which, let me tell you, Taco Bell has one of the best Pepsis. <laughs> Because I am a Pepsi gal. No tea, no shade, but all tea, all shade to Coke gals. I am a Diet Coke gal, though. Obsessed. Anyway, Taco Bell and Panera Bread have, like, the best Pepsis. In case you're wondering, which you probably weren't, you were probably here for the story. So let's get into that. So 1890 was a very interesting year in Europe. Uh, the Triple Alliance was formed between Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy, which could only mean good things for the future. Um, the diesel cycle was discovered, which later led to the creation of the diesel engine. Again, only good things can come of that. And the bike boom swept the continent, which led to the biggest bicycle craze in history. Super cool. But more interesting than all of that was the disappearance of filmmaker Louis Le Prince. Now, I am a filmmaker myself. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. I'm not a cinematographer. I don't touch cameras. I'm recording this on my cell phone. Very not all into film. But what was really interesting is I had never heard of this guy until I was watching um, a show. Um, um. Decoding the Unknown um, by Simon Whistler. And he talked about this. And I'm like, how did I not know any of this stuff? I'm, I've never been taught this. I've taken like in all of the film classes that I have taken, we talk about the history of film. And not once have we talked about this guy at all. And he is definitely one of the fathers, if not the father of cinematography and film. It's insane. Um, so I never heard of him and I'm a film person. So you probably haven't heard of him either. So yeah, we're gonna start with talking about his life and then we'll move into the mystery as it comes up. So my guy Louis, he was born in 1841 in France. Um, Louis Le Prince, obviously French. <laughs> I'm sure you could tell. <laughs> so his father was friends with a photographer. So from a young age, Louis visited that friend's photography studio pretty regularly. That guy was no was known as yeah because that's what his name was um his name was louis daguerre um who was known as one of the fathers of photography which i also did know louis just a name um a good popular name <laughs> okay so later um our guy louis le prince uh went on to study chemistry and physics at university which is really funny i think because i never had to take a chemistry class to study film um 
I got into film to get away from science. But back in the day when film was still, I mean, when they were using film and you still had to like, I mean, when a film didn't really exist, um, it was really essential for him to study chemistry and physics. So then that led directly into how he, I don't want to install a software update right now. Thank you. But Louis had to study chemistry and physics in order to do the things that he did. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Which is unrelated to this story, but I thought it was an interesting tidbit. <laughs> so, yeah, he studied um, and then he started working as a photographer and a painter because, again, film didn't exist. Um, so, yeah, photographer... That was his job, but he had to study chemistry and physics to do that. Kind of insane. Um, and so he then later moved to England to work for an engineering firm. Film, engineering, again, don't make any sense. I don't ever see people in the engineering major at my school. But um, it was really important at the time. Uh, so in this job, Louis specialized in tinting and firing photographic images, which I don't exactly know what that means, but he did stuff. <laughs> so he, you can tell with all this background information about Louis that he wasn't just interested in the creative side of photography and art, but the very technical side. Yeah, we got that. And that is just, I mean, that is how he got into it. He was interested in not only what the camera could capture, but the inner workings of it. And that's what he became known for. So in his 40s, um, Louis was convinced that the moving picture was going to be the next big thing. Um, and he wanted to be a part of it. Um, it wasn't a thing. Moving photo moving photographs weren't really a thing. And so in 1886, he created the A16 lens camera and received a couple of patents. And then he later invented a single lens camera, which shot the first truly moving footage. Um, and it was a two second clip known as the round hay garden scene. And it was just people dancing in a garden, but that's like the first film. Um, that was him. It wasn't Thomas Edison. It wasn't the Lumiere brothers. It was this man. And so, um, in 1890, a few years later, uh, Louis was he holding his first public screening in New York. Supposed to be holding that. Dun dun dun! <laughs> okay, so, something happened. As I mentioned, he disappeared. And we have no idea what happened to this man. So... Moving on from his life and times, we're going to go into the theories. So he was making his way from England, I believe, to New York for the screening, and he just never made it. So we're going to start with the most wild theory, which his widow believed in and I don't not believe this. It's interesting. And I think it's worth truly considering. So eight months after Louis was seen alive, news broke in New York about a new amazing machine. The kinetoscope created by Thomas Edison, the so-called, as I mentioned, father of film. So it's clear that if Louis would have had his showing in New York, he, if, if Louis, he, so. What if, be real, what if. If Louis would have successfully had this showing in New York, 
he would have raised a frick ton of money, which could have easily then led to wide-scale manufacturing of his cameras. And Edison, who was going after the same thing, wouldn't want that to happen. Edison was super protective over his patents and... You know, we wonder why Phil moved to Hollywood. Well, not only because of more consistent weather, but also because it was far away from Edison in the East. So Edison was in New York and people wanted to get away from him just because he was so protective over his stuff and didn't want any competition. And didn't want any competition. So Edison led the Motion Picture Patent Company. And basically, if you wanted to be in the movie industry, you had to get Edison's approval. And so he would try to take people, he would take people to court if they had unauthorized use of cameras and projectors. But Edison would sometimes get a mob affiliates involved. So, Besky was no stranger to violence. It wouldn't surprise anybody that he used those connections to get rid of what would be his biggest competition. Wild. And they don't teach you any of this stuff. Wild. But it makes a lot of sense. But of course, there are plenty of other theories. Um, one is that he just chose to disappear, which, you know, a lot of adults do. Um, Louis was, well, it was said that at the time he was on the verge of bankruptcy. And so it would benefit his family financially uh, for him to be gone, either by disappearing or committing suicide. Um, makes sense. Yep, people run away from their lives all the time. But after further inspection, it didn't really make a lot of sense. If you actually like looked at his books for the business, he was in fine shape. It's the Pepsi. He was in fine shape. Um, he also really loved his family and he it didn't seem like he would want to leave them behind. And he also seemed to be in a good mental state. I mean... Truly, we have no idea what's going on in a person's head. Someone can appear perfectly fine, um, but people act rashly um, and irrationally. So we don't know. Um, It's still pretty valid, but from what other people say who are around him, um, it doesn't seem super likely. Um, The next one was also pretty crazy. So back in the day... As we know, certain things were a lot less socially acceptable. And so people would do crazy things um, just out of survival. Um, So it really wouldn't be out of the question for someone who um, considers himself gay or queer to disappear. Um, And it could either be through nefarious methods if someone figured out um then they could be doing some nefarious things or just once again through their own volition um yeah so basically the theory is that um louis family figured out that he was gay you're one of them queers and they forced him to move and kicked him out and it doesn't exactly explain what happened to him Um, but it explains why he disappeared. Um, there is zero evidence to support that he was queer at all. (laughs) Your girly pop. (laughs) Um, but again, you never know what's going on behind someone's mind. Um, and yeah, the family did spend quite a lot of time and money to try and find Louis after he disappeared so it wouldn't really make sense that they would do that if he for if they forced if they like kicked him out um so if they were the ones to send him away that theory doesn't make a lot of sense if there was somehow people who figured out that he was gay then 
they could be doing nefarious things to them. Obviously, it's a mystery for a reason. <laughs> now, the last of the theory is probably the most likely one. Um, this was brought forth by Louis' great-great-granddaughter. And it's simple, mundane, but it makes sense. You know, is that Occam's razor that the simplest answer is the most likely one? I don't know if that's right, but that's a thing. <laughs> um, so the last day he was seen, Louis was on his way to America for the showing. So he took a train. So he went to England and then he took the train to Paris as a step on that journey. And he apparently never made his way to Paris. Or did he? So Louis may have ended up being late to the station and therefore took a later train. I think. <laughs> may have or did. I think may have. But so there were people who were at the station meeting him in Paris. But when he didn't show up at the expected time, they just left, assuming that he was like missing or something. And, you know, there wasn't cell phones. He couldn't have just texted, hey, I was late to the station. I'm going to be late. There was absolutely no way for him to let his um, friends or family know about that. Back in my day. So Louis would have arrived at Paris at like 11 p.m. So pretty late instead of continuing his journey right away, he probably took a cab into the city to spend the night. Um, he had a workshop in Paris, so he would have a place to stay. Um, so maybe the driver of said cab may have taken advantage, may have seen, maybe he knew Louis was like, oh my gosh, you're famous and I'm crazy. So he may have taken advantage of the late hour and the darkness to take Louis to a completely different and remote location, only to hit him in the head and throw him in the Cyan River. There is some evidence, actually, of this happening. Um, so two articles from the time report thieves, not like specifically him, but report thieves like doing this exact same thing. So could be simple, wrong place, wrong time. Maybe he was recognized. Again, if they didn't have like technology, widespread instant information, maybe they didn't know what he looked like. But wrong place, wrong time. Probably the most likely. Just simple as that. So I want to know, what do you think? If you're on YouTube, then answer in the comments below what theory is the most likely for you. Um, Louis was never found. Um, so we don't even know how he died, where he died, um, when he died. Um, and he was declared dead in 1897, seven years after he was last seen. And because of the disappearance, he was never able to grow his business to the widespread manufacturing. And he's just basically erased from the history books. As I mentioned earlier, I had no idea he even existed and I study film. And everybody is still kind of on the knowledge that the father of film is Thomas Edison and the Lumiere brothers. But they never consider one of the true founders is Louis Le Prince. So thank you for listening and or watching. Um, if you are listening on Spotify, just so you know, you can watch on YouTube. Um, we have my wonderful, beautiful face along with some visual memes and gaffes and laughs, mostly making fun of myself. And yeah, theoretically, I will be back next week with another episode. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy. If you have any mystery ideas or weird historical events that you think are kind of wacky, um, let me know what you want to hear or see about next. And yeah, that was historical events that don't make sense. Thank you for listening and or watching. <laughs>